Hey guys, welcome back. So I want to show you guys how to set up the new ODBS instance launcher. Uh, as part of ODBS 2, this is replacing the RPG World server. So this program we've been using doesn't work anymore as of uh, version here 2021.0307, uh, which is the latest version out here. This RPG World server doesn't do anything, so you guys can delete that. And so instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the new ODBS instance launcher that replaces it, uh, which now supports Windows, Linux, and Mac. So really great there that we have additional support. And um, that last tool was more a development type related tool. You usually wouldn't run something with a Windows UI on a server in production. So this is something that's going to make a lot more sense on a server in production. OK, so here's what I've done. I have unzipped, I downloaded this here, and I unzipped it to this folder here, L OWS2 Open World Starter Plugin. And so I'm not going to follow these instructions exactly, but they're in here. I'm going to do them in my own order. So we're going to go get our API key. When you guys log into the OWS Management Console, you'll be able to get your API key. And we're going to go first into default game I and I. Let's put that one in first. RPG. API customer key, we're pasting it in there. Make sure we don't lose the double quotes on either side. Now that that's done, we're going to go into the ODBS instance launcher folder. This is what replaces the RPG world server. And now we've got something called app settings JSON. So we're going to open that with Notepad. We're going to put our ODBS API key here. Okay. And then this is the path to the UE, UE4 editor. Okay. So I actually left my path in there, so that one's good. Uh, so we're not going to edit that one. Uh, notice that um, the it's using C style escaping. And so uh, to get a single backslash, you actually have to put two together. And the reason for that is that the backslash character is the escape character. So like in this case down here under server arguments, that backslash double quote actually turns into a quote. Back, so backslash backslash turns into one backslash. So remember, remember that we are going to have to replace this server arguments to point to our open world starter project. So it's right here. I'm going to copy this. So I'm making sure not to lose this backslash double quote. OK, and I'm going to go all the way up. I'm also not losing open world starter U project. So I pasted that in. OK, so that looks good. But these backslashes here need to be doubled. OK, so we now have doubled backslashes there. We've got our U project, and we have our ending double quote and our beginning double quote. Do not edit this username and password. Those are for my server. Dev and test is all that's going to work. We're going to save that. OK, and now what we're going to do is we're going to run a command window. And so I'm going to change the drive to L because I'm on the L drive. Oops. There we go. And then I'm going to copy this again. CD for change directory. I'm pasting that in with control V. And we're to this folder. Mm, I actually wanted to go to one more. So let's grab that one now. And it gets all the way to the ODBS. So you want to be in this ODBS instance launcher. OK. You're going to type .NET. And it is ODBS instance launcher DLL. And what you're looking for is this right here, attempting to register ODBS instance launcher with RabbitMQ server spin up Q in yellow, followed by registered ODBS instance launcher with RabbitMQ server spin up Q success in green. <clears throat> Those have to show up. If you get some other kind of error message or something, there's a problem. One of the common error messages that you may see is unable to configure HTTPS endpoint, no server certificate was specified in the default developer certificate could not be found or is out of date. If that's the case, uh, just run this dot net, uh, I'm sorry, just run this um, dot net space dev dash certs uh, space HTTPS space dash dash trust. And that will uh, do that. Also, you guys will need to do any of this. You're going to need Visual Studio 2019 installed. I believe you'll need either the web component or the desktop component. If you don't have the web component installed, install it. You're going to need it because later you're going to be compiling all of ODBS2 on your own. Uh, oh, yeah, ODBS2. Okay, 
Um, or if you're putting it on a server, you can download what's called the .NET Core 3.1 hosting bundle. That will get you what you need as well. If you don't have those, it's possible that when you run this, you'll get an error saying that it doesn't know what .NET is, right? Because that's, that's the program that's being installed. So we're all set now. Our, um, we're registered with the server, so it knows that the OWS instance launcher is connected and waiting, uh, waiting for maps to start, zone servers to start. So that's good, so we're gonna leave that over here. And now we're gonna need to go into this open world local bat and we'll just hit edit. And let's see, I said that my UE4 editor was on E. You may not have to change that if yours is C in the default location and it's 426. Okay, so we got that. Uh, so now I'm going to double click on this batch file. Now you're gonna start with the game client. Take it a little longer here though, because the first time I'm loading it, you'll have the same thing. It runs faster after that. So it built all these extra folders, intermediate, saved. You're now going to want to hit create account. You cannot use your ODBS management um, email and password. You cannot use those here. You have to create a new account. Uh, test uh, instance launcher. And we're going to go test at localhost. So localhost has an interesting thing here in that if you do at localhost, it'll automatically turn on internal network, internal network dev test user, which is a setting that basically, if you don't have um, auto loop back, it will replace your external IP with 127.0.0.1, which just loops back automatically. Um, so if you don't do an at localhost for local testing, you may have to come over here into characters, find your character, and you may have to check this is internal network test user and then save it. Otherwise, you may not be able to connect. We're just going to circumvent that, though, by uh, using at localhost. It doesn't have to be a real email address. OK. And the login. And I'm going to create a new character. And we're going to bring this up over here so we can see what happens. And I'm going to hit select this character. See, it got a spin up message received. It told me my key, my world server ID, third person example map, and running on port 778. Then you can see here, this is actually the UE4 server itself. Get all these back up and running here. Okay, and there we are. So we're now logged in. Uh, we're connected to the server. We could go transfer over to another server through this portal and it would spin up another one. Um, but I am actually going to log out and show you how you can shut things down gracefully. So we're gonna exit that. So on the other uh, RPG World server, we had a stop server, which nicely shut down the servers and reset everything. It's actually now control C. So you're gonna basically want to change your focus to this one, hit control C, and you can see it shut down the OWS instance launcher and it um, closed any servers that were open. So that's all you need to do. If you need some written instructions here to go through, and it also has some other, if you run into this issue, here's some things you can try. 
And so that is all for how to run the new OWS2 instance launcher. If you have any questions, let me know. See ya.